All right, guys, <laughs> you're in the right room. I'm Nolly Williams, author, trainer, national speaker, and boy, do we have a lot of ground to cover today. We're gonna to be talking about 10 listings a month. If you wanna consistently get 10 listings a month throughout the rest of your career, you're in the right place. I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, today. Now, I'm fully aware, I love to learn. I, I, I learn from all kinds of places, and I, and I always teach, you guys know I teach, drink from many fountains. So I'm fully aware that there's a lot of material out there. A lot of material that teaches you how to get more listings, um, how to purchase this or how to get that. That's not what this is about. This is going to teach, this is going to be a course that you will be able to use absolutely for the rest of your career. This training that you get today is going to be some of the most valuable training that you've ever received in your career. And I know that because I've taken my training to over 70 different cities. I've talked to real estate agents that have been in the business 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years plus, and uh, they have shared how the, the, this training has transformed their lives and transformed their business. And there's a lot of ground to cover. Now, one of the big reasons I'm doing this is because I get a lot of inquiries for coaching. Uh, for about the past 18 months or so, I haven't had any one-on-one -on -one coaching slots available. So I really kind of gets me in the heart. <laughs> I feel pretty bad that I'm leaving a lot of people hanging. And one of the biggest questions that I keep getting from people that want to coach with me, they want to sit down just like we're doing right now. They want to sit down one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, the biggest question that they have is, Nolly, how do I grow my business? How, to, how do I get from where I am right now to where I want to be? And just taking sort of a case study of a, or a, generaliz a generalization of what I'm seeing from many of uh, my potential students, th those that come to me for coaching that I have to turn away, unfortunately, uh, they really want to know how to get from 20 listings a year to 100 plus. That's what you're going to learn today. So let's get right into it. You know, I travel all across the country. Here are some pictures of me um, uh, going nuts. The one where I'm acting crazy with a big selfie with the background, that's you know me going nuts in front of a, um, a great group out of Cape Cod. Uh, this one down here is uh, me teaching a class in Austin, Texas. This over here is out of New York. Uh, this one over here is another city in Texas. So you know I travel all across the country teaching real estate agents how to be successful. Um, a little bit more about me, 96% of my focus has been on listings since I got, my bu got in the uh, uh, business, since I got my license. Over a thousand listings taken, and I still run a successful listing team. Now, what I want you to do is just relax. Shut off any distractions. If you've got Facebook open, don't mess with Facebook right now. This is a time for you and me. This is a time that we're going to spend together so that you can start realizing the dreams that you got in this business for. Just think about it for a moment. Think about when you got your license. You know, you probably did something else before real estate. You got into real estate, you maybe had a little bit of fear, a little apprehension, and, but you did have some, some high goals when you got in this business. Maybe you're brand new in the business. Maybe you've been doing this for a long, long time. Are you living up to the full expectation that you have set for yourself? Are you living up to all the potential that God has for you? I want you to, and in order to do that, I want you to slow down, relax, get into a relaxed state, free your mind, and just absorb the information that I'm giving you uh, today on our, call, our time together. Now, you are gonna get an 89-page handout. Those of you that stay to the end of the call um, or the end of the webinar, I'm so used to doing these on calls, <laughs> the webinar thing. Uh, you know, I love webinars, um, but I'm so used to doing the phone thing with my coaching. But you're going to get an 89-page uh, handout, those of you that stay to the end of the webinar. Now, how do we know if you stay to the end of the webinar? <laughs> well, believe it or not, in, in today's modern times, it's pretty crazy, but there's software that actually tracks when you, when you log in and you... Uh, you know, sign up for a webinar. There's software behind the scenes that actually tracks how long uh, each person that, that logged in stays based on how you signed up for the webinar. So it's kind of crazy, it's weird, but uh, for those of you that uh, do stay to the end, you're going to get an 89 page handout. It's going to be all the slides that I cover 
today on our time together. Now, I like to put God first, then family, and then business. I think that that's a very important principle. It's how I run my business. I run my business with biblical practices. If it wasn't for the Bible, uh, I'd personally be lost. I've been studying the Bible since 1989, um, and I actually teaching since then as well. Um, now, let's look at what we're going to learn. Very, very critical. Five things that we're going to learn today, how to easily earn a quarter million or more a year how to transition your core business to listings, how to win the listing before you meet with the seller. Did you realize that that's so critical today that you've got to do that? Number four, we're going to talk about how to earn more money and work less. You definitely want to do that for the sake of your family. And we're going to be talking about the three secret tools of a top listing agent. Now here are the training modules. There's five of those as well. We're going to go in. First, we're going to start with the secret to how I took over a thousand listings during my first 10 years in the business. Then we're going to get into the secret key to generating more listings. There, uh, there actually are uh, in my expanded training uh, that I do that's, you know, uh, multiple hours of training. There's actually what I call the, the eight keys. Um, today we're just going to cover three of those. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to cover them all, in other words, but don't worry. You're going to learn how to get your 10 listings a month in this call or in this time call stop saying it call <laughs> during our time together all right uh, the third thing we're going to talk about is um, the secret tools of a mega listing agent then we're going to get into the secret lifestyle of a mega listing agent and finally we'll we'll look at the secret lead sources of a mega listing agent let's dig right in and let's start with part one and this is the secret to how Nolly took over a thousand listings during his first 10 years in the business. Now, when I first got my license, when I first got in the business, um, it was kind of a tough time for me. I um, had just uh, lost everything. Okay, I just went bankrupt. Have you ever been in a place where you've lost everything? Uh, I've been there. I've been there and uh, it, it was not a good place to be. Now, Rewind a little bit from there. When I was 22 years old, I started my first official company. Now, if you talk to my mom, <laughs> she'll tell you that I've been an entrepreneur since I've been since about 12 years old, and I've sold stuff. I've, I've you know, I'd go to school, and I was the guy that I get I got five dollars a day uh, lunch money, and I was pretty good back in the day. <laughs> And I would take those, that, that $5 and I would go to the corner store and I would purchase as much candy as possible. And I would take that candy to school. I'd purchase, you know, packs of candy, Starburst, Now and Laters. Y'all know about Now and Laters, huh? You might know about those. Uh, and I'd break them open and I'd set them up on my desk and I was shop. I was open for shop. Business was being conducted. And, and I'd sell them for about a dime each. So I could take a pack of Starburst, it might have had 12 pieces, break that out, might have cost me 30 cents, 40 cents, and break that into $1.20. So what I really enjoyed learning uh, during that time, from the time I was about 12 till uh, really, till I started my first real business at the age of about 22, um, I liked the process of profit. I liked to take something and quadruple, or maybe even do five times what I spent on it. Now, when I was 22 years old though, I see as, as I got older, I wanted to be in the music business. I wanted to be a rapper. And I had, um, at the time I had, a, I had uh, accepted Christ. I'd become a Christian. That was in 1989. Uh, I had, I was into a lot of crazy stuff as a, as a juvenile. Um, I wasn't, I was kind of a wayward kid, <laughs> you know, hanging with the knuckleheads, the, the, the no gooders. And um, what happened at the time was that my uncle invited me to come live in Texas. At, at that time, I was living in Los Angeles, right? And I was around a lot of the bad environment. My uncle invited me to come live in Texas for, for a little while. I said, you know what? I'll come visit Texas, but I'm not, live, I'm not moving to Texas. Now look at me. <laughs> got the cowboy hat, got a little southern drawl and everything. Uh, I've been here a long time. I moved here in 1988 when I was 18, and I've been here for many, many years. God's been good to me, though. You know, he, my uncle was in the music industry. Uh, I told him that I wasn't going to 
move here for good, but what I would do is visit for three months. Well, what happened is I just never left. <laughs> Got married, um, started my family, and just moved on from there. Now, when I was 22 years old, I still had, like I said, dreams of being in the entertainment business, so I did start my, uh, my first business. It was a record label. I started that company with 1800 bucks that I borrowed from friends and family, grew it to where it was earning over $2 million a year. Uh, we were earning over $150,000 a month in that business. We had a uh, 6,000 square foot home. It was on a seven bedroom house on 10 acres. The pond on the property was over an acre. <laughs> Just the pond itself was an acre. Uh, had a 1,500 square foot office building, a 1,200 square foot re recording studio on the property as well. We had 18 artists on our record label. We had 12 employees that were employed for our company. And uh, my wife and I, we pretty much lost everything. You know, when the music industry imploded, like everything just went, I say to hell in a handbasket, uh, we were part of the, we were a casualty in that, uh, in that situation. And we went from making 150 grand a month to making nothing. In fact, we were making our mortgage payment, our monthly mortgage payment uh, on an American Express card that we had borrowed from my sister-in-law. Now that's rock bottom. And this was around the time when I started thinking, what am I gonna do next? Now, those of you that uh, have done something before real estate, you're tracking with me because you know you know, when you got into real estate, you're like, is this what I should be doing? And I was kind of in that mode. I was like, okay, I want to get into real estate. My heart's set on this, um, but am I, is this going to be my next career? Is it going to be successful? I don't know. Um, but I had the fortune of reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller, and I was able to get a copy of that book, and I read it twice. This was in 2003. Um, I read the book when it was first released and I read it twice before I even started practicing real estate. And um, what Gary, one of the things that I'll never forget that I read in that book was Gary said, uh, there are so many reasons to devote and focus all okay, of your attention or to devote all of your attention and focus to uh, marketing and, and generating listings. And when I read that, I said, you know what? Uh, Gary says I should do this. I don't have another strategy. So that's what I'm going to do. And so I devoted 100% of my time and attention to nothing but listings. I was able to take 21 listings during my first 74 days in the business. And the way I was able to do it, I, I, I ran across a, a huge secret. And I want to share that with you. It's something that I learned in the entertainment business. And that is if you can make someone famous or you can make someone a star, if you will. Now, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you can get them some kind of notoriety, everything else that you do will be easier for you. And so what we would do, for example, in the, music, in the entertainment business is if we had a new artist, we knew that in order for that artist to sell records, or CDs, uh, in order for, for them to move product, people had to know about them. You know, they had to know who they were. This was back before YouTube. There was no Facebook. There was none of that. So how did we uh, get these artists out there and make them known? You know, the Internet was barely coming in, right? Um, because I started the record label in 1992, and we, we ran it to about 2003. That's when I made the switch to uh, real estate. And what we discovered was that if you could create the right branding behind an artist, you could really get that. Now, they had to be good. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, when people heard the music, I mean, it had to be, you know, it had to be good. But if we could get the packaging right, believe it or not, if we could get the packaging right, we could sell. And we learned that we had about three to five seconds uh, from the time that a, that, a, that a customer saw the packaging from the time that they would maybe pick it up. And so our goal, get this, and I want you to think about this. Our chief goal and our chief aim was, was to get someone to pick up the CD off the shelf. That's it. We were not interested in trying to get them to buy it or anything like that. We just wanted to get them to pick it up because we knew 
that if we got them to pick it up, the chances were very, very likely, very high, that they would potentially purchase. And we would create the packaging in a certain way where it would really draw them in to where at least they would want to go to the demo station. Back then they had demo stations. They didn't have iTunes, okay? Got to, got to go back there with me. There was no iTunes, so the way that you would hear a new CD is you would go, you would just kind of browse around, and then if you saw one that you thought you liked, or even back in the days with vinyl, if you saw an, uh, a record that you thought you might like, you looked at it, and then you would just kind of go by the uh, artwork, as crazy as that might sound. You actually are selling music based on the way the artwork looks. And the, the thing is that I learned is that the buying habits of your prospects and your clients has never changed. People buy things based on the packaging. And so I'm going to share some of the secrets that I learned from my, from my entertainment business days, how I incorporated that uh, into the music industry. So just, just kind of picture that in your mind, that that's sort of the way the music industry works. Um, we would try to get them to pick up the CD, and then we would have a maybe a three to five minute window from the time that they uh, saw the CD to maybe pick it up. And then we would just try to pull them in and get them over to what they call the demo station where they would actually listen to the material and then they would fall in love with it. See, one of the things that you, one of the challenges that you have right now, if, if you're not getting all the listings that you want, is that your packaging might be a little bit, right? We're gonna work on that today. We're gonna, we're gonna get it up to snuff where it needs to be. Um, if you sit down, see, if, if, if you get in front of a client, you probably don't have very many problems. I mean, in other words, you're great, you, you're good at selling, people love you, um, and people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So they, you get them to know you, you get them to like you, you get them to trust you. You don't have a problem with that. But how do you get more at-bats? How do you get in front of more people? Well, you do it. How do you get them to pick you up off the shelf and at least take a good look at you and maybe demo you out? Well, you do it by having the right packaging. That's what we're going to talk about uh, throughout the duration of our, the rest of our time together. So that's just a little bit of ba background about me. But again, what I'll tell you is that the secret to how I took over a thousand listings really uh, boils down to the packaging. Now, once people get past the packaging, they love the product. I mean, it's just, the, it's just the outside. Like you say, don't buy a book. Don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, guess what? People are judging you by your cover. And depending on how your cover looks, that's going to determine whether they pick you up and decide to read you, right? Or take you home. That's the way it works. Now, let's get into part two. We're going to move kind of right, right along because we got a lot of ground to cover. In this part, we're going to talk about the secret key to generating more listings, the secret key to generating more listings. And here's the secret key, and the question is this, what is that one thing that you could do, and you ask yourself in the first person, what is the one thing I could do to get more listings such that by doing it, everything else would be either easier or unnecessary? Okay, think about it. What is the one thing I can do to get more listings such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? And what do you, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? Well, the way I answer that is this, become famous, become famous, become well known. I don't want to have any secret agents out there. I want you to be a known agent. And, and what that means is that everyone in your area should know who you are. That's what we're going to learn today. Because if people don't know who you are, you don't exist for them. You should be well known. And by the way, being well known and being famous doesn't mean that you have to be haughty, arrogant, proud, boastful. You know, Jesus was well known. He still is, by the way. And he has none of those qualities. You know, he has none of those negative qualities. So you don't have to be, you know, a hothead to be well known. Everyone should know who you are because you have a commodity, which is yourself, that they should be purchasing. Absolutely. So, what, how do you do that? How do you become more well known? Well, what I want to share with you here are the three secret tools to connect with your sellers and really set you apart. So that's, that gets into really part, part three. Now part two is really all about um, this, that secret. And if you could just snap that into your head, uh, 
and here's here's why. Let's go back. I'm gonna, let me show you something. Uh, when we talk about, uh, I asked you, what is the one thing I can do to get more listings? Says that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. You know, I ask that question a lot to a lot of my coaching students. And I'll hear things like, you know, I can do more lead generation or I can do more prospecting. But think about it. What if you could only pick one thing? Like with us in the music industry, it was like, what was the one thing that we could do, okay, to get, to get someone to pick up that CD? What's the one thing we could do? Because that was our only, the only hope of a sale was to get them to pick up the CD, okay, back then. Now, the, the one thing we could do was to have fabulous artwork. I mean, fantastic artwork that just made them really be compelled to pick it up. Now, let me ask you a question. What does the artwork have to do with the actual music? <laughs> Not much, if anything. But we knew that if we didn't have that right, nothing else would work. And so what a lot of my coaching students will, when I ask this particular question right here, a lot of my coaching students will say stuff like, do more, you know, uh, uh, you know market to my sphere of influence, do more door knocking, um, call, do more cold calling, um, do more lead generation, time block, they, all these kind of things. But if you could only pick one thing, right, that would make all those other things easier or unnecessary, Think about it. If, if you're a famous person, does a famous person get their calls returned? Yes. So if you're lead generating, guess what? Your phone calls are going to be that much more effective and productive because people know who you are. Does a famous person get their calls returned? Do they, do they get their calls picked up in the first place? If you're knocking on the door, if somebody knocks on your door and it's a famous person, right, or you're out there knocking and you're famous, people are going to answer the door for you. So everything, whatever you might have thought of in terms of the thing that you could be doing, this is the one thing that you could do that would just augment everything else that you're doing in your business and make it that and make it really pop, right? People will stop second guessing you when you're famous. You know, in my area where I sell houses, you know, people know who I am. And that was by design, not default. There's a strategy to it. I'm going to share that with you today. There's a way to do that. And uh, when people know who you are, you don't have to sell yourself. You know, uh, they're telling you, man, Nolly, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad you could list my house. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're real busy. You know, they're, they're practically, um, you know, not begging me to list their house, but they're back. It, it's almost like I'm doing them a favor that I'm actually coming out and collecting money from them. <laughs> You know, but that's the way people see it when they know you, you know, that you're famous in your area, you're sought out, you're in demand. So part three, how do you become famous? Okay, Nolly, we get it. How are we going to do it? Well, I've identified the three secret tools. Now we knew for an artist that it, first of all, it started with the packaging. They had to have a killer CD cover and then they had to have a fantastic sound because the CD cover. It, you know, that was going to drive people over to demo it. And once they heard it, oh yeah, this is going home with me. You see what I'm saying? So we had to have the full package from A to Z. Now how that translates into your business is that there's three secret tools. The first of which is your, your book. Okay. You say, what's a book got to do with it? Well, when you think about being famous, <laughs> what do most famous people have? It's almost like if you, if you think about it, when, when, when we had an artist, that we were, we were uh, creating uh, a brand new artist, just debuting, trying to make them into somebody. Uh, is it fake it till you make it? Yes, because nobody knows who that artist is. Now they have star potential, don't get me wrong. They have what it takes to be stars, but nobody knows them before they know them. So you gotta package them as a star before you even put them out. Like you don't just start them out like this is a new artist and you, you know they're coming out with shabby clothing and, and you can barely hear them on the microphone. No, you bring them out because they're already, like you're already a star. You know, people just don't know that you're a star yet, but they're about to know, right? And so here's the deal. <laughs> now don't get me too excited now, uh, but, but it, it starts off with looking your part. You know, if you're going to play a, a role in a movie, the first thing you want to do is look the part. Don't be, don't come on to a movie if it's a period piece from the 1700s, you know, and you're wearing a shirt and tie. That doesn't work. You know, dress the part. Dress the part. And famous people have books. You should have one as well. 
If you were going to go on the Oprah Winfrey show, you know, just watch some of these talk shows. And they're like, uh, well, my new book, well, I just wrote my book. My book comes out next week. And I, was, I got to thinking to myself, I said, man, all these famous people have books. I need to have a book. So that's what I did. I wrote a book. And this book actually helps people uh, through the process of uh, deciding whether they want to sell their house or not from the very beginning all the way through to closing on their house. So it leverages my time throughout the entire process. Let's say, for example, you see somebody at the gym and um, you might see that person day in, day out. They're thinking about selling their house, right? They're thinking about it. They know you sell real estate. Are they going to come up to you and talk to you about selling their house? No. Okay. They're, now, once they decide that they want to sell, they might talk to you. But just while they're thinking about it, they don't want to talk to, they don't want to talk to me, right? They don't want to talk to you because we're considered salespeople. And if you're going to think about it, if you're going to go buy a brand new truck, a new car, who's the last person you want to see? Huh? The last person you want to see is the salesperson, right? But, but when you roll up on the lot, it's like you get that feeling like, man, here we go. I'm on the car lot. Here he comes. And you see the salespeople start to walk toward you. You know how you feel. Well, believe it or not, okay, this is the same way prospects feel about us, okay? We don't, like to, we don't like to believe that, but when you look at the trustability index in the United States of America, realtors are the least trusted profession in America, okay? We used to be sandwiched in between attorneys, uh, between lawyers, and used car salesmen, okay? Now we're dead last. Now, uh, other people have taken a toll too, like the clergy, right? They used to be at the top, now they're like ranked number seven. So we're not the only ones that are slipping, but people just don't trust us. Now, once they get to know you, they like you, they know you, they trust you because you're a great person, you're, you're trustable, right? But before they know you, there's a lot of apprehension. But your book is gonna help people get to know who you are, right? I'm throwing them around. They're gonna get to know you. Um, another thing that it does is it leverages your time. So you look at marketing your home, uh, people want to learn about you from a distance. That's the reason why if you're going out to a steak restaurant or going out to eat, uh, you don't want to walk into the restaurant and ask and, and interview the, 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 the people that work there, the maitre d' and say, hey, how's your food? Um, can, you know, you're not going to trust that person. What you, you're going to go straight to Yelp and look at the opinions. Now, if you're going to buy a brand new laptop, like it might be a new uh, a Mac or, or a, Len a Lenovo, whatever it might be, you're not going to go to the manufacturer and ask their opinion. You're going to get other people's opinion. You're going to go and kind of look around and see what you can find. Well, the way people are programmed, when they get your book, they're going to read all about, you know, what you get do to get home sold, right? And so um, I used to just tell people to write their own book, but I had a coaching student that kept after me. He was like, man, why can't I just use your book? And so finally, I went ahead and, and did it to where I licensed the book and allow people to use it uh, at no cost to you. Uh, all you're going to do is go get some sponsors, a handyman, carpet cleaner, home inspector, moving service, house cleaner, and a painter. Each of them pays you 99 bucks. It pays for the entire system, right? And not only that, but your sponsors are going to pay you that every single year, right? So you're going to actually make money after you license the book, you're going to be making additional money just from having the book in your repertoire. Um, now, you can write your own if you want. Uh, what I recommend if you write your own, it's going to be about 13,000 words. It'll probably take you about six weeks. Um, if you're a writer like me, if you're not a writer, it might take about three months to write it. Um, and uh, you set aside that time and you, you spend a few hours a day. Or you could just license mine, no cost to you. Um, essentially, what, what I did with this one is I created it. And uh, it's completely uh, de nollyized so none of my information is in here. It's in Microsoft Word, so you can go in and tweak whatever you want to. Or you can leave it exactly like it is and just change the cover. You know, what people are doing, this is kind of another example. Uh, you could just change the cover, put your logo, your company on it, uh, and then you've got, you know, your own book. So the key, though, that I really want to get to get into your head is that if you want to become famous, you got to start looking the part first, right? And what do famous people have? A book. You're famous, you should have a book. Now, what's the second thing that a famous person has, right? If you're an athlete, 
uh, or you're uh, a, an actor or a musician, what do you have? You have a press kit, a press kit. Now in our business, we call this a pre-listing package and I'm going to share with you uh, what I have, what my pre-listing package looks like right now because I think this will really help you as you're developing yours. And I'm going to quickly go through um, some of the key things that I have in my pre-listing package. First of all, I put it in a yellow envelope like this. Um, I call it a gaudy yellow envelope. I get these on Uline, U-L-I-N-E dot com, Uline dot com. Um, and the reason I put them in this yellow envelope is so that they really stand out. Um, I also have a portfolio folder like this, right, that I put it in. And, you know, I do little tricks like this. Look at that. You know, you got your business card there. You pop it off. Boom. Consider it sold. Right. Little tricks like that go a long way. And a lot of you don't want to spend the extra money, but you should spend just a little bit of extra time and money on your marketing materials because that's that's what people are going to judge you by is is is, you know, you say, don't judge a book by a cover by the cover. Guess what? They're going to judge your book. <laughs> They're going to judge you by by how you present yourself. So this is what I call a seller's kit. And it's here are the pieces that are in the seller's kit. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you what these are. and We're going to go through them. Um, now, what is a pre-listing package to begin with? Uh, now, we always seek to have a pre-listing package. And we what we like to do at the Nolly team is we like to get this pre-listing package to them prior to us going out and meeting with them. Uh, there's a lot of material in the pre-listing package. I'm going to quickly go through them today just so we'll, you know, be able to stay within our time frame. But just rest assured that there's, there's a lot of great material in here um, that's going to help you succeed. Now, the first one is your cover page. This is all, all of this that I'm going through with you right now. This is stuff that you could easily create on your own. Okay. Uh, your cover page, I like it to be colorful and impressive. Um, you're going to seek to wow the client from the very onset and you want to blow away the competition. So that needs to look really, really good. Uh, you want to have a cover letter in there, right? And all your cover letter is doing is just uh, speaking to them about uh, who you are, what you have to offer, and uh, introducing yourself, meeting their needs. And it's got a table of contents. It shares with them everything that is inside the actual, pre uh, you know, I call it press kit, right? Uh, the, the, the next thing you're going to have in there is a marketing plan. Now, your marketing plan is going to have all the details, you know, your checklist of how you're going to get their house sold. And it's really going to add that wow factor. It's your detailed plan for getting their home sold. And it sets you apart. Testimonials. Now, we don't like to use the word testimonials anymore, but I put it here because that, that way you understand what this is. But we'll use the, the, something like, for example, I'll show you mine. Uh, we call it real results. See that? We call it real results. And this gives prospects a reason to trust you. It helps them identify with you, with, you know, how you can specifically solve their problem. Okay. And it lets others brag on you um, from a third party, party perspective. Okay. So in other words, it's like these people are bragging on you and you don't have to do that yourself. So really when you go to the listing appointment, you don't really have to say anything about what you do to get home sold because they already know. They read, you know, your, your, all your marketing that you do, uh, your marketing plan, and then they looked at your case studies, okay? So this one I would like you to call it your results, your case studies, okay? Or you can even call that reviews. Those are more popular terms nowadays than testimonials. Now let's look at what's the next thing in your press kit. Um, the next thing you're going to look have is a special report. Now the special report, what that does is it identifies the key things that cause homes to not sell and causes the client to know that what, what we're going to do, uh, we, in other words, we realize what makes homes sell and what, what makes them not sell. Uh, now this works especially well if you had a client that had a bad experience in the past. So for example, I'll share with you how I use mine. So this is the top four reasons why homes don't sell. So if I'm at a listing appointment, I say, or, or even before then, you know, in the press, you know, the pre-listing call, uh, I might be on the phone with Clara. And I say, uh, you know, Clara, are you aware of the, uh, the four things that, that create a home not being able to sell or create a sale? Or are you aware of the four things that cause a home not to sell? And Clara's going to say, well, no, tell me more about that. Well, uh, Clara, it's either poor marketing, bad photos, you had a lousy agent, 
or price. Now this especially works if you had somebody that had their house on the market before. You know, you just go to them and say, you know, John, you had your house on the market before and it failed to sell, didn't it? It failed to sell. Now, John, what I've come to understand in my experience is that the reason why your home failed to sell is going to be one of these four reasons. Either you had poor marketing, bad photos, a lousy agent, or you didn't have the right price. And then you just ask them, you know, John, which of these four do you think affected the sale of your house? Now, I guarantee you most people will never say that it was their price that created the, you know, that, that caused their home not to sell because they just don't go there. So I've got a lot of scripts around that. We don't have time to go. I've got 10 scripts to work with overpriced sellers, people that are, you know, uh, thinking too high. But um, if, I, if I take a listing, I use all my scripts, and then if I, if I happen to take the listing at what I call their price, in other words, okay, John, we're gonna try it for one week or two weeks at your price, and then we'll go with what the market is saying. Right, because you and I don't have an opinion. It's what the market's saying. The market speaks very loudly. We don't have to speak for the market. The market can speak all, all you know, all on its own and for itself. So, um, if I go back to John in two weeks and his house hadn't sold, I go back to John and say, "Hey, John." Now I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I want to share with you how this tool is helpful. I say, "Hey, John, you know, uh, your house hadn't sold yet, and you know we've gotten several offers on." some of our other properties that are very competitively priced. Uh, and let, let's go back through, John, and look at why homes don't sell. Let's, can we review that again? Great. Well, number one, John, it's poor marketing. Now, you know we've, we're doing all, we're pulling out all the stops. We've got our slick marketing plan in place. In fact, you and your wife said that the marketing is fantastic. You wouldn't change a thing about it. So uh, the marketing is not the problem, right, John? No. Great. Okay, uh, bad photos. Now, remember we had that, that drone fly through your house, flew through the front door, flew out the back, right? Remember that, John? And we had, uh, you know, all kinds of different angles taken of your home, and you guys love the photos. So bad photos wouldn't be the reason. Now, John, do you have a lousy agent? You know, you've got me on the job. Do you have a lousy agent? Mm-mm. I wonder what the problem could be, John. What do you think the problem could be? Hmm? Right? Now, it only leaves them with that one alternative, which is price. And so this is a handy-dandy piece that helps you get those listings right priced quickly. Now the next thing that we have is what we call an agent interview. The agent interview dispels the common consumer view that all agents are created equal. Uh, it gives clients an excuse to trust you with their most valuable asset and it reinforces that they made the right decision by hiring you. So what we came up with, one, one of the things that I did was I came up with a, um, now this is a money piece, it's the top 10 questions you must ask any agent before you list your home. Now, the good news is that 72% of sellers will meet with one agent before they list their house. The purpose of this webinar is really to get you to be that one agent that they meet with. But if you happen to be going on a situation where people are interviewing more than one agent, you know, maybe two agents or three, this is a handy dandy piece for you to be able to give them a, uh, a quick questionnaire where you have your question, um, your answer, and then basically what they can do is they can interview you before they ever meet with you. So we call that um, an agent interview sheet. And we actually encourage them to use this if they're going to be interviewing multiple agents. It's a great sheet that really helps. Uh, the next piece that we have is our top 10 reasons. Now, what you want to do is you want to give people reasons that they, sh that they should trust you with the sale of their most valuable asset. And that's what this piece does right here. It's the top 10 reasons to trust the sale of their home uh, to you. So it gives them 10 reasons. It also gives clients an excuse to trust you with their most valuable asset. Um, and again, like I said, it reinforces that they made the right decision. Okay, that's the, that's the top 10 reasons. Because people, in order for someone to do business with you, the possibility of trust has to exist first. And so that's what this creates is the possibility of trust with that person. The next thing that we have in our pre-listing package now I've seen I just want to say this I've seen a lot of pre-listing packages and I've used different ones but I can tell you I've listed over a thousand houses one at a time I mean literally we've had over a thousand different sellers okay that have raised their hand and said yes I want to list with Nolly one at a time okay and this is the the pre-listing package that for the last at least 600 deals we've used and we went from maybe 40, 50 page down to this. Now we still have our book, 
which kind of tells the rest of the story. And this, this fills in all the gaps. But with your pre-listing package, it doesn't have to be that big. Now, what your homework package does is it's going to have actually four pages. The first page is why my home is special. And that helps you get the full scoop on the property so you can get the, have the right ad copy. Uh, it makes you look like a genius when you, when you come to write up the what we call the ad copy on the home. And it helps your client em, uh, emotionally separate. So whenever they, write, whenever they start doing your, their homework, they emotionally separate themselves from the house. Okay? I'm going to give you a money piece in just a minute on, on this homework. Now, uh, the second p page is going to be my home's upgrades. So this helps you know the specific upgrades that your, uh, that your seller did so that you can get top dollar. It gives you negotiating leverage over the competition, and it helps you also to write great ad copy. The third homework pa page, and actually the, the, the last two pages, are going to be the, what we call the property info sheet. Um, and this is really data that is specific to the MLS. What we did is we looked at Trillia, Zillow, Realtor.com, etc., and we looked at what the the most common criteria that people are checking off when they're what buyers are looking for in a house. Now, when you go to your MLS, you might have six or seven pages of check boxes, but most people don't really care if the house has a bidet or not, right? So you don't have to worry about every single check box. Uh, I've come up with a handy dandy, um, just you know, two pager that your client can easily fill out. Now, remember I told you there was some money involved in this? What we always do is we, I have my assistant to call, call and make sure that before I go out to the listing, they have the homework packet filled out along with two keys. Now, when I get to the listing and I see that the homework packet's already filled out and that there's two keys there, what does that mean? I've already got the listing, right? So having them fill this out ahead of time is gonna help you secure the listing even before you meet with the seller. Now let's move on. Um, the, the last pages that we have are some home prep tips and these, these are just checklists, okay, to help the seller uh, to, just, to go through their house and prepare it, to, you know, to be sold at the top dollar. It helps guide the seller on the exact things that they need to do. And then the next thing that we have is the showing tips. It gives them the best practices when it comes to showing their home. You know, a lot of times there's, there's a lot of information that you tell a seller at a listing appointment. And the question is, how much of that information are they really going to retain and remember? Right? You're there for an hour, an hour and a half. How much are they really going to remember during the listing process? Maybe 10%. And that's why you've got your pre-listing package and really you've got your book to really kind of jog their memory. So if they ever call and say, hey, what was that I need to do to get my house you know, prepped? Well, thanks, John, for calling me. I really appreciate that. Now, I've got a whole checklist right there in Chapter 4. Right? So you're constantly anchoring them back to your book right? throughout the process. Now, the third key is your movie, okay? Your movie. So, you've, so here, here's the deal. You've got your book, right? What, what does a famous person have? A book. A famous person has a press kit, and famous people have a movie. You should have a movie. Now, what is that? That is your virtual listing presentation, or you could also call it your pre-listing video. Now, since you guys have been good, I'm going to go ahead and put you a link to my pre-listing video so you can kind of get an idea um, of what that looks like, or we'll send you a link after the webinar is over. Um, I can't sit there and do it right now, but after the webinar is over, we'll make sure that we send you out an email uh, with a link to my video so you can watch it. And you can kind of see what elements go into a great, uh, you know, a well-scripted uh, listing presentation. Okay, a virtual listing presentation. That way they can watch you, they can see you in action before they ever meet with you. When they meet with you, they'll feel like they know you already. Okay, that's what you really want. Now, let's get into part four. And I know we're kind of um, scooting, scooting, scooting. You can kind of see why I didn't really open it up for a lot of questions on the webinar because it's a lot of content and I told myself, I'm going to spend this time with you. I'm going to give you everything that you need to know so that for, for the next 10 years, 20 years, you'll be able to use this material. I've had people that have come up to me. They've been in the business, like I said, 20 years, 30 years. They've been realtors for 40 years. And they come up to me after, the, after a seminar and they say, this is the information that we wish we would have had when we first got in the business. Okay. This is life changing. So the fourth piece that, that I want to jump right into is the secret lifestyle of a mega listing agent. 
make no mistake about it, if you're a mega listing agent, you got a secret lifestyle. Now, are you living your life by de design or are you living by default? Because it's only one or the other. Are you living by design or are you living by default? What I say is go ahead and live your life by design, <laughs> not by default, right? Um, let me ask you a question. Do you want to earn a quarter million or more a year, work 20 to 30 hours a week or less, have nights and weekends off, take four to five vacations a year and be debt free? Well, if you focus on listings, that's the life that you can live. This is the lifestyle that I lead and the folks that, that I've trained in the listing business on how to take more listings, this is what they do. And this is absolutely the life that you can have. And if you raised your hand, you said you want that, it's available to you. You can easily duplicate all of the stuff that I have in, you, in, uh, in my business. You can duplicate all this uh, in your business. Because the thing is, I teach people all the time, you know, I'm a coach, a trainer, you know, here's the pre-listing video that we use. Um, uh, it's, it's a great tool. Uh, my book, you know, my pre-listing package. And one of the things that, that it frustrates me is that, you know, I teach people how to do all this stuff and they don't do it. <laughs> and I just tell them, you know, if you would do all this, you'll get the success that you want. Please do it. And so I've come up with a way where you don't have to do any of this. Uh, I've done it for you and it won't cost you a dime. It's free. Uh, there's no cost to you. So let's look at it. Um, what I say is don't reinvent the wheel. I've done it for you. When you think about having your own book, I said, you know, how can I price this to where I can give people their own, uh, basically it's a license, okay? I call it a license to steal. Uh, you're gonna get all the stuff that I use and you're gonna be able to license it to use it in your business um, without any cost to you, by the way. All you've gotta do is, is essentially license all the stuff that I have. Now, if you're gonna do this on your own, you can do that as well, but if you know you're not gonna do it, why not pick up all my stuff at no cost to you uh, and just snap it in? It's in Microsoft Word. You, you know, it's, it's easy to edit if you want to, or you can go right to press, just change the cover, done. Um, so you get an 80-page guide, uh, you get a lifetime license. So the way copyrights work, and I was, I've been in intellectual property uh, since my early 20s, and the way copyrights work is I'm giving you a derivative copyright license. Now, the way that works is in the U.S., uh, the way copyrights work is that if you, if you steal somebody's material, there's a fine of $150,000 fine and all that kind of stuff. But if you license their material, it's licensed. You know, it's a license to steal. You can take it and do what you want with it. So you can take the, the works that I've created and tweak them, do what you want with them, even the pre-listing package is all in Microsoft Word, and I'll give you that as a bonus as well. Now, the books cost less than three bucks to print, right? So if you think about it, um, you know, one of, the, one of my favorite activities when I go to a closing is uh, I ask the seller, I say, hey, John, did I do everything that I promised I'd do to get your home sold? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Well, John, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and give you five copies of my book so that you can pay it forward and give it you know, out to anybody that you know that you come across that's thinking about selling their house. Now, five copies of your book's only gonna cost you 15 bucks, right? And you're not gonna pay for it anyway because sponsors are gonna pay for them. But, with, but even if you pay for them out of pocket, 15 bucks, you think about it. If you gave John five of your business cards, what would happen to those, hmm, right? Now, if you give him five books, those are gonna go straight to his cubicle and he's gonna, any, any, people love giving out stuff, right? And they go, this is my realtor. They'll be bragging on you, right? And uh, I can't tell you how many people uh, that I've helped to get listings just by having a book. People say, oh, well, he's got a book. I'm gonna list with him, right? Uh, there's a bunch of free bonuses. So free bonus number one is my complete pre-listing package. So that whole pre-listing package that we just went over and went through, you're gonna get all of those materials uh, in the pre-listing package completely editable so you can make them your own. You're also gonna get bonus number two, which is my virtual listing presentation. And now you can't pop your picture or my picture out and put your picture in, doesn't work that way, but you're gonna get the, the script that I use to do my video and you'll be able to do yours word for word if you want to, um, or you can, get, you can take your own video footage and then just use the script that I have. That's editable as well if you wanna edit that. You're gonna get 14 team member job descriptions. That's free bonus number three. three. Um, and that's all the different team members that you'll have, you know, in the future and so on. You're going to get all those uh, job descriptions as well. 
uh, in Microsoft Word, and you're going to get the Listing Manager training manual that I've used uh, for years to train my listing managers. Right? If you don't already have a listing manager, this is the manual that you're going to use to train yourself to get more, you know, take more listings. Uh, but it's completely editable. It's in Microsoft Word, so whenever you hire a listing manager, you'll have that document as well that you can just tweak, and uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So it really is all the tools. If you look here, it's all the tools that you need uh, to succeed as, in the listing business, and it, and, and it's also um, your a lifetime license, right? Uh, it's all digital delivery. So when you people ask me all the time, well, how am I going to get my stuff? Is it going to come in the mail? It doesn't come in the mail. Uh, it's going to be digitally delivered, and um, all that's going to be uh, delivered to you through uh, email. Okay, you'll you'll get a link and so on. Um, now. How are you going to get it at no cost? Well, like I said, you're going to get 900 bucks a year just by having the system because we've designed the back cover as a template to capitalize on your book. It's a preferred vendor program. That's what's in the back cover. And um, when you look at it, you're, what it is is essentially you're going to have six vendor spots uh, at 99 bucks each. So you're going to have a handyman, an inspector, a house cleaner, carpet cleaner, a mover, and a painter. And those six vendors uh, are going to pay you 99 bucks. And I, I, what I say is go ahead and collect that every single year. Even though you only pay one time to license the system, you're going to be able to collect 600 bucks a year from these, you know, from your, from these people. Because think about it. Um, if you go on a listing appointment, you're talking to Scott, and you say, "Hey, Scott, you know, remember we talked about you got a couple of broken." Uh, doorknobs, you need to get those fixed. I, I recommend, here's the guy that can do that for you. And then the carpets, remember we talked about getting those clean. Here's my carpet cleaning service. That back room that's orange, the orange walls, we need to go ahead and get that painted as well. Uh, here's my painter. And, uh, and you need to get your house cleaned. We talked about that. So here's the person that I recommend to clean your house. So think about it. All these people get to tag along with you on every listing that you take for 99 bucks. That's a no brainer. I mean, for $99, I get to tag along with you, you know, I, I paint houses for a living, and I get to tag along with you on every listing that you, you know, that you go on, I'm in, you know. Uh, what we tell people, and I have a whole system, uh, I, I basically, I'll show you here, um, the, the next thing you're going to have is that you, you do have that uh, lender spot. Now, remember, the lender spot goes right in here, and that's $299. So that's how you're going to be able to generate $900 each and every single year, right? And you'll get 100% of your investment um, plus the printing cost. So with that $900 that you're getting every single year, you're going to be able to print 300 books. That's 25 books a month that you'll be able to give out at no cost to you. It doesn't cost you a dime. So what really is, guys, a no, it's what we call a no-brainer, a no-brainer. Now, uh, the other thing I'm going to give you is uh, my proven call script a follow-up email script, a vendor enrollment form, back cover template, six yeses, and you're done. So you're going to get all those templates where you can just copy-paste. And what I like to do, if let's say, for example, I'm going after a uh, painter. What I do is um, I'll just email three painters in the same email and say, hey, here's what I'm doing. It's a preferred vendor program. It's good for one year. It's 99 bucks. And the first one that emails me back that you want the slot gets it. Right, and that's how you're going to get them filled up real quick. Because people are like, "Wait a minute, I better get my uh, form back in." You know, I give you an enrollment form to, that they send back to you uh, with with the payment. Real easy system. I walk you through that as well on different videos. That's real simple. You or your assistant can do it. Um, I recommend you order yours now. There's a link below. Okay, so that brings us to part five, and this is the the three what I call the secret lead sources of a mega listing agent. There really are only three of those. What are they? The three lead buckets. And if you focus on these three buckets, what Pedro says is all of your wildest dreams will come true. And y'all know about Pedro now. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite, right? Okay, so what are the three buckets? This is, uh, this is really the golden information right here, guys. So I want you to pay attention. You know, I know the webinar, this is a long webinar uh, compared to some of the other webinars, but I really wanted to share with you guys, um, I'm sh taking of my time, and I'm, I know I'm taking of your valuable time, but I want to share with you how you're going to get all these listing leads, right? How are you going to get them? Real easy. And I'm going I'm to give you the specific system what to do.
First, you're going to be you're going to go after your sphere of influence. Second is going to be your farm, and third is going to be your niche. Those are the three lead buckets. From those buckets, all the listing leads that you ever need will come from those. That's it. You'll never need to tap into any other buckets. And I'm going to show you that right now. Now, by the way, if you think about it, all famous people have a sphere of influence, a farm, and a niche. Your sphere of influence, because retaining a current client is more important than generating a new one. If you abandon your current clients or your clients that you have, your competitors are waiting in line to orphan them. Did you know that? If you abandon your current clients, now many of you, know, you uh, if you're like many agents out there, um, are probably slacking in the department of taking care of your current clients. The easiest sale that you'll ever have is on someone that you've already sold. You think about it, if you go buy a pair of shoes, you meet a, a nice salesperson, uh, and my wife, my wife is a good example. You know, she went to, uh, to a store here in town, and she found a great, it was a department store, she found a great salesperson, and she really likes this guy. And he sold her a pair of shoes. Now, it was real hard to get her to buy the first pair of shoes. Don't get me wrong, it was real hard, because my wife is, it was, it's, she's hard to, get, to win over. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Uh, and you know, this guy did all his, 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 God bless him. He had some great sales techniques, uh, but he was real genuine. And finally, my wife started trusting him and went ahead and bought a pair of shoes. Now it took him like night and, you know, arm, uh, cats and dogs, night and day, whatever you say. It, it took him a lot to get her to make that initial decision. But what will it take for him to get her to buy a second pair of shoes? Not much because she's already, I mean, she already trusts him. Same thing with your clients. And even though your sellers or your, you know, your, your past clients will only do business maybe every six to nine years, it doesn't matter. They know lots and lots of people that need you, right? And if you're like most agents, you haven't stayed in touch with your sphere of influence like you should. Now, I'm gonna show you why you should be doing this. Seven out of 10 sellers, according to NAR, Seven out of 10 sellers chose an agent based on a referral by a friend, neighbor, or relative, or they went ahead and used a previous agent. That means 70% of your business will originate from someone in your database, okay? So I want you to think about this. If you're gonna make 100 grand this year, how much of that 100,000 will come from this group of people? $70,000, right? So why would you neglect them? You know, if, why would you leave $70,000 on the table? Not good, not a good decision. Now, let's look at this stat. 86% of your past clients say that they would use you again. That's according to National Association of Realtors, did a study. So that means that at the, at the close of escrow, you have an 8.6 out of 10 star rating, 8.6 stars, that's pretty good, right? Now. Fast forward about a year later, and guess what that drops to? How many people actually use the same agent again? <laughs> you already know it's between nine and 12%, okay? According to National Association of Realtors. So that means that you went from 86% approval rating down to nine to 12%, right? Why does that happen? Why does that happen? Huh? And what, you know, why is it that, that your approval rating fell so far? because people just, they forget your name, they forget who you are because you don't stay in touch with them. So you already know how important it is to stay in touch because 70% of your paycheck depends on it. So let me ask you a question. Why aren't you staying in touch with your sphere of influence? I want you to think about that. Why aren't you doing it? Well, I think I know the answer after meeting with so many agents, coaching so many of you, uh, and doing so many seminars in all cities across the country. Um, what I've come to understand is that you lack an easy to implement plan. And that's what I'm gonna give you right now. How do you get your sphere of influence to become raving fans, sending you business left and right? Well, you have to stay in touch with them and you have to recruit them into action. So I'm gonna give you an easy 18 touch plan to do that. I call it the KISS method. Not keep it simple stupid, 
but keep it simple, sweetheart. Or my favorite, keep it super simple. I call it two glasses of wine simple. You know, I just had my second glass of wine and I still understand what he's saying. <laughs> That's really simple. Now, why do, why do I have to make it that simple for you? Well, because if it's not simple, you won't do it. That's the bottom line. Same thing for me. If it's not simple, I won't do it. So the KISS method is this. A monthly e-newsletter. I use more solds. You could use any e-newsletter you want, but it's got to be set it and forget it. In other words, you set it up once and you never mess with it again, right? Uh, it just automatically goes out because I don't want you saying, well, Nolly, I'll handle that. You won't. I coach, you know, listen, I'm your coach. You won't do it. You'll have good intentions to get it done, but next month comes and you're trying to put your newsletter together, it won't get done. Oh, I'll just catch it next month. Then that one doesn't get done, right? You need to get it out of your, off your plate and it needs to get done. We use more solds. Uh, there's expertly written articles that go out, you know, every single month. Um, and so that keeps you in touch with your database, but it doesn't matter what you use, but make sure it's inexpensive, you know, affordable and automated. Okay. Uh, more Souls, you can check that out at moresolds.com and uh, that's five bucks a month. It's actually a CRM that I created for my team and then we made it available for others to use. Uh, then I want you to do a quarterly mailing, a quarterly postcard. I'll give you some examples of what that looks like in a minute. And a semi-annual call. Now, when you think about the postcard, you're not going to be doing a new postcard every quarter. Like, here's my fall card, here's my winter card, here's my spring card, my summer card. No. If you have a database of 500 people, you're going to get 2,000 cards printed and you're going to send the same card every single quarter. I'll give you some examples in a minute. Uh, the reason you're going to do it that way is because if you start getting creative and trying to do different cards at different times of the year, it won't get done. Okay? It's got to come off, really it's got to come off your plate and you got to delegate. Right? Off your plate and delegate. You know, it's been said that if you want something done right, do it yourself. But for realtors, for you, what I say is if you want something done, delegate it. Because <laughs> if it's on your plate, it won't get done. That's not being critical of you. It's just to say that you're busy and you've got other things to do. But this needs to get done, right? So all you're going to do is you're going to print up your postcards. If you have a database of 1,000 people, you're going to get 4,000 cards printed. If you have 500 people, you're going to get 2,000 printed. You're going to give those postcards to a neighbor friend or your daughter, your, your son, a college student, you're, you know, your, your, uh, your admin person, if you have one, your assistant, you're not going to mail them out. You're not going to put uh, labels on them and stamps. It's not going to happen. They'll sit, they'll sit in a closet for two months, right? Because you're like, well, I'll put labels on them tomorrow. You won't do it. <laughs> Delegate. Right? That's $9 an hour work, 12 bucks an hour. Get it done. Get to have somebody do it. And then a semi-annual call. So let's say, for example, and, and by the way, you only need to call your top 200. Let me say it again. You only need to call your top 200. So if you've got, uh, you got those 200 people, you make one call a day. That's it. So I just gave you a very easy marketing plan that's actually going to cost you um, and by the way, this is going to cost you about 10 bucks a month to do this because remember that, that postcard mailing, that's going to be paid for by sponsors. So you get your postcard. Um, I don't have a sample of postcard with me. I'll show you some samples here in a minute on the next, I got some on the next screens, but you get your postcard, for example, and then on the back of your postcard, you split it into four sections and you're going to get a, uh, maybe a, a lawn service, somebody that mows yards. Uh, maybe a house cleaning company and two other trade, maybe a couple of local restaurants and that are nearby, right? In the area. And you're going to get them to, let's say each of them pays, pays you 50 bucks. And let's say it costs you $200 to do your mailing printed and mailed. Uh, then, because think about it. If, if you're mailing them for 50 cents each, you, you're doing a jumbo postcard about this size. And let's say you got 200 of them, that's going to cost you about 100 bucks. And then you're going to get them printed for about 30 bucks, right? I use gotprint.com, G-O-T-P-R-I-N-T.com. They actually do all my printing except the books. The books have to go through a different printer, but all the other printing that I do, um, I go to gotprint. 
uh, and they and they print that stuff for me. So if if you were spending 130 bucks on that, and then you got four slots for 50 bucks, guess what? You just made 70 dollars. If you're going to a thousand houses, you know you just look at what your print costs are and your mailing cost. You divide it by the number of trades that you have sponsored, you know, promoted with, and uh, let them pay for the cost because these people want to be where you are. You know, they want to go to a, if you got a thousand past clients or a thousand people in your database or you got 500 or 200 they want to be in front of those 500 200 people as well so all of that stuff can be sponsored you don't have to pay that stuff you don't have to pay for that on your own uh, you should have that all paid for uh, you know for you and what I like to say is all of the money that you need for your marketing and advertising exists in the pockets of your sponsors it's out there but you don't have to spend it make sense all right let's move on uh, okay, so then it uh, looks like we're doing good on time. So you're gonna. Uh, so here's here's a recap. It's a monthly e-newsletter. Set it and forget it. It's uh, a quarterly postcard. That's four times a year. You send them a postcard, and then you call them. You get on the phone and you call them twice a year. You think about it. If you are in touch with your sphere of influence uh, 18 times a year, let's say for example, you had a college roommate. And you uh, talk to that person 18 times a year, right? That's about every three weeks you talk to that person. Are they ever going to forget you? <laughs> Never. But if you have a college roommate and you hadn't talked to them in five, ten years, you know, they're not going to forget you because you're roommates, but they're not going to really, you know, you're not going to be top of mind, right? So 18 touches is all you need. If you want to throw in for extra measure, you can do a Happy New Year card. Uh, you can even do a Christmas card, uh, but we like the New Year's card because it doesn't get lost with all the other Christmas cards, okay? So I think you get it on your sphere of influence. That's a very easy system for you to implement. Uh, here's a little bit more information about More Solds. You can go to moresolds.com and check that out. Um, that's absolutely free uh, to, to get it. And if you want the newsletter, it's uh, five bucks a month for that. Now, let's get into farming. Get back to geographical farming. What we like to say is grow where you're planted. Farming 101. So a farm is a territorial region that you choose in order to build your business there through consistent marketing, exposure, branding, involvement, and advertising. Now, how do you choose a farm? A, a farm is going to be 500 or more houses. It's going to have a steady turnover with like 7%. Uh, and what that means is that uh, if, if, that farm ha if the farm that you pick has 1,000 houses, it needs to have at least 70 sales a year to be kind of a viable farm. Now, those numbers can skew a little bit if you're going after higher price tags because you can sell fewer homes and still kind of make your numbers, but that's a general rule. Average sale price has to be enough to support your goals and it should be nearby. Uh, how do you go about it? Well, and this is Farming 101, so you can schedule your farming plan to walk the neighborhood at least once a month. So the fact is you can hit 50 to 100 houses on an afternoon. The kicker, though, is that you have to have a handout uh, of value, what we call an item of value. So that's going to be something that you put on their door um, of value, like a newsletter of valuable coupons, calendar of events, sports schedule, vendor trade directories, things like that. And what, what I like to say is those are going to be things that people won't easily throw away. The key is that you want to brand yourself. So you want to also make sure that you're, you're branding yourself properly. So it may be hard for some of you guys, but the studies do show that when it comes to proper branding, uh, at least 30% of your mail p of the piece or the piece that you're putting out there should have your photo and or your logo, your team name. That should be 30%. It's really non-negotiable because farming is really all about branding you. Here's some examples um, of some great farming pieces. Now, what I like about this one is this, this is a, um, a uh, events calendar, a schedule of events or a calendar of events. I like this because, you know, people want to know when the jazz festival is happening or when they're going to have the new, uh, you know, the wine tasting or the wine festival or whatever's happening in town. People want to know about that kind of stuff. Uh, here's another piece that we used to do. How much is your home worth in today's hot market? Find out free at alloveraustin.com. That's another um, now we don't we we kind of I think we tore that site down, but all that used to be when we had that was it was a site where people could go and get a free 
uh, market analysis of their house. And um, they could also uh, request a free copy of my book, right? So you might want to have a site like that as well. Um, farming is really about getting involved. You know, I call it running for realtor. So that, that, could, that looks like city council meetings, HOA, PTA, Neighborhood Watch. I mean, you're out there, you're involved. You're involved in the neighborhood. Now, I don't want you to choose a church based on the farming opportunities. <laughs> That's not what I teach. Nolly doesn't teach that. So you, you know, you walk in, you know, you got your Bible and you know, you walk, oh man, look at these cars up in this parking lot. Ooh, we got some Maseratis, Mercedes Benz. Ooh, it's got some BMWs. Ooh, this, this is the church I want to go to, right? No, that's not what I'm talking about. But, <laughs> you know, everywhere that you are, right? If, you should, you should kind of hang out in your farm, right? So if there's a great church in your farm, why not plug in to that great church um, for the right reasons, <laughs> right? For the right reasons. Now, EDDM, this is going to be your new best friend. That's called, that's Every Door Direct Mail. It's available through the United States Postal Service. And it's a great way to reach out to every single home in your farm for 18 and a half cents per house. So let's just round that up to 20 cents. Let's say, for example, your farm piece uh, went out to a um, thousand houses right at 20 cents a house that's uh 200 bucks right that's 200 bucks now let's say furthermore that it cost you 30 bucks or 40 bucks to print so now you're still under 250 dollars but for a thousand houses now you've got a you've got four people like i said uh somebody that does um landscaping and then you might have a pool cleaning service a handyman or a house cleaner and those four people pay you 75 bucks each to tag along to a thousand houses. How much did it now cost you to, to market to that thousand houses? It really didn't cost you any money at all because uh, you've got people that are paying all the money for you, all the costs for you, right? The cool thing about every door direct mail is that you can get everything paid for you and it's not going to cost you a dime out of your own pocket. So EDDM, um, Google it. Uh, go to Every Door Direct Mail, you know, Google Every Door Direct Mail or USPS.gov and you'll find out more about EDDM. It's a great service that you definitely want to be involved with. So that's farming, guys. And the third bucket that we're going to talk about, the third and final bucket, let me hear a drum roll. Okay, so that third and final bucket is your niche. Your niche. What is your specialty? What is your specialty? And again, you got to have all three of these buckets rocking in order to have a rocking listing business. The question that a niche answers is, um, what do you offer that most other agents in the room do not, right? Or in your office? And what is, wh why should a client use you versus the person sitting next to you or the other uh, person in town that they possibly could use? Those are the two questions that a niche answers, right? Why should they use you versus someone else? Now, a, a niche is really your specialty, right? Now, why should you have a specialty? Well, here's what we learned from the medical industry. A, when, when we look at a, uh, the medical industry, a specialist earns an average of $153,000 more than a general practitioner. General physicians have 30% more visits and general physicians are twice as likely to work nights and weekends. Okay, so think about this for a minute. They, uh, the general physician is working a whole lot more and making a whole lot less. So why is that? You know, because they're sought out, they're in demand, and they're relevant as far as the specialist is concerned. So you, think about it this way. If you go to see a cardiologist, you're going to pay more than you go to see, to have, uh, you know, just a physical, for example. The cardiologist is going to work a lot less uh, work a lot less than a general practitioner, but they're going to make a lot more money, right? Because they're completely, uh, they're completely relevant to the, the market that they're serving and they're in high demand. Even though here's, here's the truth about it. A cardiologist is completely irrelevant to 94% of America because only 6% of Americans have heart problems. But for the 6% that do have heart problems, they absolutely need those services. Now, think about your niche as a division of your business. It doesn't have to define you, def define you. It's just a division. It's a division of your company. So what are you going to specialize in? It might be uh, luxury property. 
It could be homes on one or more acres. It could be for sale by owner. Uh, it could be new uh, construction. It could be golf course communities. It could be uh, farm and ranch. It could be land. It could be uh, divorce sales, expireds for sale by owners. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on as to what you can specialize in. Uh, for example, I've got a friend of mine, he owns oneacreplus.com, right? So he sells homes on one or more acres. Now that's not all he does, but for the plants that, 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 that he markets to that have one or more acre, that's all he promotes is this one acre plus. Now is he better at selling, home, selling homes on one or more acre, you know, acres than you are? No, <laughs> but it looks like he is. So he gets the job, he gets hired. That's how it works. Now let's go through these three lead buckets again because this is so critical guys. This is how you're gonna get those 10 listings a month. Pay attention, right? I know it's been a long call uh, or a long, a long webinar together, but uh, pay attention. Your sphere of influence, your farm, and your niche. These are the three buckets where you're gonna generate all the leads that you ever need. So how's it gonna look? Here's how it works. Your sphere of influence is gonna be five listings a month your farm is going to be three listings a month and then your niche is going to be those two listings a month. So here's what I want you to pay attention to. When you think about your listing business and success, I want you to think about a tripod, like a three legged stool, like a tripod stool. When you stand on that stool, is it going to support you? Absolutely. It will support you because it's a perfectly balanced stool. But what would happen if you took one of the legs off of the stool? Huh? Now, what would happen if you took two of the legs off the stool and your stool only had one leg and you're trying to stand on top of it, right? That's the problem with most of your, with, with, with your business right now. You know, and most of you have what I call a one-legged stool. Most of those of you on this webinar right now have a, uh, a one-legged stool. The only thing that you focused on is your, maybe your sphere of influence but you're, you don't have your farming going and you don't have your niche rocking and you're doing a lousy job taking care of your sphere of influence or staying up with them. If you will initiate the plan that I just gave you, you absolutely will get those 10 listings a month. It can't fail, it can't fail. Now, um, I'm gonna actually share with you a lot more information on this uh, with like how to make the calls, how to do, because I mean, we can go on and on. I mean, I, I could teach for 20 hours, but I really wanted to give you just the core material to really help you to take your career to that next level. Um, so what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you a uh, uh, five chapters of my book, Success with Listings. So those of you that already have the book, Success with Listings, you know, you can read, uh, you know, the, the it's going to be chapter six through 10. I'm going to go ahead and give those to each of you on the webinar. If you already have the book, go ahead and read it. If you don't have it, I'm gonna go ahead and send those five chapters to you because that's gonna talk all about lead generation, how to time block your day so that you make sure that you're, you're doing everything that you need to be doing to do what I just told, you know, shared with you, um, you know, to take care of those three lead buckets. Don't forget guys, all the tools that you need to succeed in this business are right here for you. Um, it's, uh, you know, Nolly, has, I've done it for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I've got all the tools that you need in my complete listing system. It doesn't cost you a dime out of pocket. You know, you're gonna have your sponsors that are gonna pay all the costs for you. Um, and don't forget, so here's the, uh, the book, Success with Listings. If you don't have it already, it's on Amazon. Um, but again, I'm gonna send you those five chapters uh, to yet no charge. Um, just as my gift for you to be on, you know, being on this webinar with me today. Hope this has been very helpful. I know that if you do uh, the things that I've shared with you on this webinar, you absolutely will not fail and you'll be able to give you, get your 10 listings a month. What you just got was a blueprint for success. God bless, get out there, make it happen, and make it a great day.